Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three. Well, 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 folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Randomic Berto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. And look, I see that already there's a call waiting. And you know what I do here. The people who take precedence on my show every single time is anyone who calls. So before I get into the show, I want to see who is on the other side of the line. So caller... Guess what? You're on. You know, this is Bianchi. Bianchi, are you? come on in, my brother. Bianchi. P-I-A-N-K-I. Bianchi, Bianchi, come on in. You're saying that we should impeach Trump. Yes, we should. You have to be more explicit. See, you have to be more explicit and apply a very thorough and specific identifier to that we. Okay. Because what happens is that people unknowingly or people who don't feel that way are looking as if they are included in that we, and many thereof would not want to be in that we. So be more, well, you let know, me if be you specific. can. Sure. I, I, and I, who is this we? I grant you that. You're absolutely right, sir. You're absolutely right. We, the majority of people who have the morals to realize that somebody of this, the caliber of this president should not be there. The person that knows that anybody who does the things that he did, anybody who committed treason as it's been proven that he has done thus far, deserve not to have that office. Let me tell you, I've been holding back on the impeachment call myself. And the reason I've been holding back on it is for exactly that same, one of those same reasons. And the reason is we need to know what this character has really done. This man is an evil. This man is a cancer. And at this point in time, Democrats and Republicans who stand with this guy, who stand with not removing this guy from office, are complicit in all the evil he has done and in all the evil okay, well, he is doing. You said that he has committed treason, yes, right? Yes, I did. Without, right, qu- without, qu- without equivocation, Hang sir. On. Okay, hang on. So who, what country is the United States at war with? The United States is, I understand you're going to use a constitutional text, and I want to tell you we are in an implicit war with anyone who is attacking us in whatever form that affects our democracy. Currently, that would be Russia. Currently, that would be any, per, any particular institute, uh, you know, uh, state institution that is doing us harm and it is now proven that well, that is something that russia has done yes congress has not declared war against any country therefore donald trump and no one else can be accused of treason now okay let's get let's go for the technical definition if you are going to get with the technical definition is as, as far as whether trump should be uh, should be accused of treason or not I tell you what I would do. As the honest broker that I always am, I will acquiesce to you on that issue. Okay? Because... Uh, well, you w- thank you. Now, uh, no, no, uh, real hold quick. on, hold on. I, I'm, I'm okay. giving you your due. I'm giving you your due. Like I said, everybody, if everybody would be honest, if everybody would not simply try to be right, uh, but try to do the right thing we would be much better off. I give you that. By the classical definition, you are absolutely right, sir. You are absolutely right. Yeah, but right. see, here's the point. You threw it out there under the suspicions that someone would not 
know that you are using the word. No, I threw it out the there. Realm. Yeah, no, yeah, I threw it out there because that's what I believe. Say. But because well, I the, wait a minute. Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Hang sorry. on for a second. Sure, sure. Go ahead. What I heard people say that he's committed treason, mm-hmm. not knowing what the word means in the jurisprudence arena. Yes. Yes. And that there is wrong. Okay, let me... You let are, they are deceiving people and getting them to get all hyped up. They go out into the world and spread that around. The next thing you know, you got a lot of folks running around that's misinformed, ill-informed. Bianchi... And I think that's a terrible thing to Bianchi, do. Bianchi, I am going to partially agree with you in that I should call it virtual treason. I should not have called it absolute treason. I should call it... I should, quali- I should have qualified the treason and said virtual treason. So I really, you won't hear, you won't hear Sean Hannity or any other person who when an intelligent person calls them up and say, Egberto, this is the actual definition. I think uh, you should clarify because we, I think, it is going to do a, a, a wrong elsewhere. And you have Egberto tell you, well, Bianchi, you know what? I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I will call it virtual treason. So the thing about well, it you is... Know, go ahead. Mm-hmm. And another thing, too, and I'm going to let you get back to your show. Sure. I hear people say that Donald Trump was not in- exonerated. Well, was the Central Park Five exonerated? Yes. See, they get... No, they were not yes, exonerated. They were. No, they wasn't. What happened to them is the charges were stayed. Yes. They abandoned the charges. Ex- be- they were not exonerated. They when you have somebody that has been charged with a crime that they otherwise did not do and go to prison for, like you have some prisoners that's been in for 10 years, 15 years, and all of a sudden a governor comes out and says, well, I exonerate you. Well, they have committed a crime. And the, and, the, and, the, and the authorities say, well, we exonerate you for whatever reason. So there has not been shown to be a crime as far as Donald Trump is concerned. Uh, so for Mueller to use the word exonerate is doing just what happen, happens when we use the word treason. It's not the anyway, same, that's sir. My perspective. Uh, before you go, before you go. Donald Trump has not been convicted of a crime. The Mueller report has shown that crime. he has committed many crimes. He has not been charged because he cannot be charged uh, as a sitting president, according to the Justice Department. But Donald Trump, within the within the report, has proven to have have been to have committed several crimes. So let's be clear here. Donald Trump, the only reason he's not indicted and, set and put on trial and convicted is because he's currently the president. Donald Trump is a criminal. And I think you, people like yourself... Well, look, I oh, can't... Hold on. Well, Yankee, I, well, I, I, don't, I don't want to take Yankee, up no I more time, very long time Next to time talk I out. call in, you point out how Donald Trump's a Before criminal. Before you go, I want to, you, there's one thing here, okay? I gave, you your, mm-hmm. your, I gave you your time to talk. I want to tell you something specifically to you and with that implicitly the audience. It is time for intelligent people to stop using their intelligence to find and bend themselves into knots to support a character like this. You are a conservative. You are a good conservative. Do your job as a good conservative, my friend, and work with good conservatives. Work with honest conservatives. Work with moral conservatives. Stop destroying your own image by trying to protect well, an let me, evil let me person get ready to of go. this See, caliber, you did it sir. again. I am, a, I am a United States citizen. Yes, you are. First to anything else. You are. Whether I take conservative, liberal, or in-between leanings when it comes to politics, that comes with me being a United States citizen. Yankee? And I think it's wrong for people to use that word conservative the way you did because people out there who don't understand 
that that is a privilege of a United States citizen. Nobody is born that way. Then when they hear it and hear someone say that they are that, then the first thing going to come to their mind, oh, he's no good. Well, uh, Look, Bianchi, I gotta get back Bianchi, to my cooking. I have never ever told you that you're no good, and I've always entertained you. I'm not you saying on this. you did, but the way you described it, going along with your anti Donald Trump no. stance, which is okay. But when you when you go have a when a person have an anti Donald Trump stance mm -hmm. and use a particular word like conservative, then when they leave and go into another arena and hear somebody say I pronounce myself as being a conservative, the first thing they're gonna do, based on what they heard, is assign them to a relegation of disgrace. Well, um, I gotta get back to my cooking, man. Thank you, brother. You have a good one. One, all right all right take care all right folks uh well that was bianchi my my good conservative friend bianchi okay anyhow we are going to have a great show for you today it's going to be a bit of an ad hoc show because today i had to go up before before the show i was off to see my doctor and hey let me tell you something guys uh before i start the show i'm going to actually tell you my story if you'll indulge me for a while and then we're going to get deep into the shows but i ask you to listen to my story because it is actually a pretty darn good person i'm going to take a little personal exception here and read what i wrote on my i just wrote this on my facebook page and i'm going to read it because i i, I think about this it goes uh, this is what i wrote i said uh i went to see my doctor today blood pressure 108 over 60 down to one blood pressure pill from three. I used to be on three. I'm down to one. But here is the story I want to tell. I'm, uh, this is what I wrote on my Facebook page. He knows uh, the, the, uh, Here's the story I want to tell. My doctor knows I am a full-time activist, so he's always ready with a subject when I get there. Egberto, why is nobody, including the, the media, scolding the president for potential genocide? Well, you know me. You open the door, and my narrative is going to go off. So I went off on how America gr uh, gradates human value. Human south of the border has less value, but at $750 per day per person, their being is valued to the corporations, the prison industrial complex. As was about, as I was about, eh, I have a typo in there. As I was about uh, to continue my narrative, he said. I am talking about Trump saying he could kill 10 million Afghans to end the war, but he did not want to do it for now. Hell, after the doctor told me that, I, it was like, hey, I'm guilty, man. Like so many, Trump is making so much evil normal. Instead of giving them all their merits we choose, I guess, look, I guess south of the border is real, while Afghanistan is a maybe. But is it? We all have to do better. We have an evil being in the White House. But it is worse than that. That evil being, that evil requires those who are complicit. Too many are doing so willingly while many are coerced by an irrational fear. I have some typos in there. I'm going to clean it up after the show. But now back to my BP. I got it under control by trial and error with weight, diet, and exercise. You know, you hear that all the time, but how? Those who read my stuff know that a few years ago, I almost stroked out with a BP, a blood pressure of 240 over 140. Well, today it's 108 over 60. Look, I'm excited as hell. I, we fought like hell to break that top number 140 barrier. I mean, uh, we fought like hell. That doctor tried all kind of stuff, gave me pills. Some of them didn't work because, you know what, also. And I wouldn't take those. And so we, we went back and forth with those, uh, with those pills still. We got it right. And now we're starting to own off of it. And today he looked at me and he said, okay, Berto, I'm taking you off of this one but i don't know we we're going to see if eventually we can take you off of everything but 
I don't know if we've topped out here or not, but just maybe. And the thing about it, folks, is blood pressure runs all through my family. Everybody in my family, including my beautiful, beautiful daughter sometimes, but I think hers is stress-related. It's too early for her to get it. But we have a tendency to have high blood pressure. But, 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 now for my shameless plug. Here's a plug. You know, if I'm going to talk about my weight and tell you my business, I'm going to throw a plug in there. Support Politics Done Right with Egberto Willis by getting the book. I wrote this whole stuff up about how I did it, and I did it with Lose Weight and Be Fit Now. Say no to snake oil weight loss. Patreon.com slash Politics Done Right. Subscribe, and you get an e-copy of the book. And all my e-copy of all my books, including As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right Wing Doom, or... The one that I'm currently writing, How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It. Go to patreon.com slash politics and write, or just go to egbertowillies.com slash my books or something like that. Just go to, just go to politics and write.com, and if you want to subscribe, help, help, help out the show, that's how we do it. But anyhow, let's get to the program, folks. Let's get to the program. What is the program about today? Today, what is the program? Let me get to that screen. Title of the show, Impeach Trump Now or become just another banana republic sooner than we think. And I mean that. I mean that. We have no right as a country after what... Look, there, there's nothing that occurred in that thing yesterday that was not in the Mueller report. What occurred yesterday is a mass of Americans got a chance to see the evil within, the crime within, the, the, mob, that the mob boss that we have as President of the United States. And when I say the mob boss, I think I am being rather kind to call Dr. Trump a mob boss because he is not a mob boss. Trump is not a mob boss. Trump is just your lowly, lowly criminal uh, with a lot of help, right? Uh, he, he is a criminal with a lot of help. We are helping him. Because he is going to keep taking, taking, taking until he can take no more. So let's make sure, folks, let's make sure cleanly, clearly, let's make sure cleanly and clearly that this guy cannot continue the pill for. Yes, Kathleen, having that BP with a uh, low BP really did it for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited, you know. I'm excited because it actually feels like an accomplishment. It, it's funny because when talking to the doctor, and I'm going to get back to the show right now, but Kathleen, you guys come first. When, 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 when the doctor came in, he said, Egberto, you did a very good thing. You did, it, you, know, you did it all right, all that kind of stuff. I looked at the doctor and I said, look, doc, please take your credit. You were like the guider, guidance, okay, man? You gave me the right drugs. You played with me when we needed to adjust different drugs and that sort of thing, you know? So, you know, take your dues, brother. It's, you know, you're my doctor. You know, you're my doctor. You did it. You know, because he was too damn, he was too damn, like, humble. He was like, oh, you did it. You were able to. No, 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 no. I mean, I had, you know, one of, I, I never go to doctors, okay? I just went to doctor af doctors after that big scare a few years ago when I had that 240 over 140. I am a man, terrible person when it comes to uh, going to doctors. I, I work out hard. I do all the hard work. I try to stay in shape, but I don't like doctors. My sister's a doctor. I don't like doctors except for her. When I have questions, I ask her. Okay? But, but, and my daughter is going to be one too. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I am, um, I feel that I, I found me a very good doctor. I stumbled onto a very good doctor. And this is the first, and I'll be very honest with all the people that I'm listening right now. And, and this, has a, uh, this has a bigger picture, and that's why I'm bringing it here, even though we're talking politics. This is the first doctor that has treated me like a human being. The first doctor, Tejas Meta. The first doctor in the entire time that I have been in this country that has treated me individually like a human being. Hi, Clive Boyce. Welcome aboard. Kathleen, Barbara Jean, Michael D. Not Newton. That is a first, and I mean, there's a camaraderie between my doctor and me. And, uh, you know, I'm comfortable telling him, oh, well, this is doing that and what you think. And, and 
we have he has the best bedside manner we talk politics uh he doesn't agree with me on on probably 30 40 percent of the things we i mean it's just a darn good doctor and you know i mean i i told him today and you know because we we're talking about some poli policies and i said look even though we don't agree on xyz i would love to interview you so we can really sit down and talk about this and let people hear that there are different options uh, out there but anyway, so uh, I, I can say that absent this particular doctor, I probably would not have gone through the machinations to get, to get well, if you will. So kudos to you, Tehasmita. And anybody who is in Texas, in the humble area, Northeast Texas, Tehasmita is the guy that you should be going to. Tehasmita. Anyway, going back to the show again, and sorry for my diversion, but I'm excited after... Uh, after I'm just excited that I got it down to 10860, folks. I'm just excited. I'm human, man. You know, feels good. But anyhow, going back to business, folks. Going back to business. Title of the show, Impeach Trump Now or Become Just Another Banana Republic. Sooner than we think. As one listened to the Mueller hearings yesterday, even as they, they were crimes, we knew about hearing it in the halls of Congress made it real. Made it real to many. Time to impeach. Nancy Pelosi, I understand what you're doing. It's old school. It is old school, my good friend. Nancy Pelosi, smartest politician I know, no doubt. In this one, Ms. Pelosi, you are wrong. Impeach now. Show strength and show that we do believe in some modicum of morality. It is a must that we do this. Uh, if we don't, it's not only about what they, there's a, there's a phrase called moral, uh, uh, help me out team. There's a, a, a thing, whenever you uh, excuse something, people keep repeating, doing it again. Moral, moral jeopardy or moral, moral hazard. It is, a, it will be a moral hazard for other presidents. Welcome aboard Lee Grant. Welcome aboard. It will be a moral hazard to other presidents if we don't impeach if we don't impeach now if we don't even impeach we have to also impeach before the presidency i got a call come on in caller from 832 you are hot hey what's going on egbert it's rudy hey rudy talk to me brother listen i i i i watched the entire um Hearing. deal i watched the entire deal yes as uh, both both hearings in both committees, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, and then I listened to um, the politicians. I, I was specifically listening to Sheila Jackson Lee, right? Try to make the argument that once social media catches up, because most people were not able to watch the hearings, um, that social media would catch up and drive the momentum towards impeachment. That's not going to happen. But I'm telling you, on the other side, I don't hear, I, I'm with you, man. I don't, let me tell you, I'm going to say this to you. I heard what you said, and that's what made me want to call in. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, you are such an optimistic guy for this country getting rid of Trump. But what you don't realize, man, and I don't know if you're, if you're seeing everything from every direction, 360, or if it's just 180. Okay, but tell if me. I tell you, mm -hmm. Trump has developed. Now, I, listen, I do think eventually he's going to go to jail now. But that said, that doesn't change the voter base. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, this guy has developed momentum, and he's able to spin. Because is, is what, what, what CNN and MSNBC doesn't do well. They, they, they discuss it. They discuss the topics. But, but uh, uh, regarding him, but but they don't they they're not giving direction. Right. Whereas Fox News actually gives direction to its populace. Oh my so God! They, so you I, can I interrupt you, Rudy? Can I interrupt you, Rudy? I I want to interrupt you because Please. Rudy, here's why I want to interrupt you. You are absolutely so right in what you just said there. I want you to repeat it about Fox News. What Fox do? Li listen, I watch. I watch all of it. And four oh nine, I'm I coming read. to you next. Four oh nine, four oh nine, I'm coming to you next. Go ahead, Rudy. 
Okay, Fox News, the difference between CNN and MSNBC, they, 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 they talk about so much of it, but they don't give any clear direction to their populace. Right. Whereas Fox News absolutely, absolutely gives direction and marching orders to its populace. So when you have when you have that level of organization, man, there's no way. Now let there me let no me qualify that now. Let me no this we are now Rudy and you you said I'm a positive person and four oh nine I'm coming to you next. Rudy, I'm gonna keep you hot as I answer four oh nine. But I wanna answer one thing for, uh, a, a quick quick answer to you, then I'll go to four oh nine. You're absolutely right about Fox News giving direction. You're absolutely right that CNN and MSNBC do not and they won't give direction because they are purported news organizations who tell the news they don't make the news okay the, i mean in as much as we complain about how they tell the news they the one thing that they have done is they have not saying hey people you need to go out there and do xyz as a sean hannity would do and all the other talking heads out there except for the news department at fox news here's the kicker though uh rudy that is where the organizations, the third-party organizations like us, the politics done right, the Young Turks, we have to explode. That is what we are trying to do. When we went over there to Netroots Nation, we spoke to several of the people in this domain, the, the small operators like this, who can actually make a difference. You're right. It is not the job of the news media to do that. What we want eventually that news media to be doing is reporting about what the progressive media is out the progressive activist media is out there doing to mobilize as you are speaking about let me tell you something you are right about trump has a, an army but that army is still not the majority it's still not the majority it's, it's a strong 38 percent but we have to make sure and empower those with us rudy hold on let me get to 409 and then you'll Good be night. back in the conversation sir come on in 409 go ahead 409, you're on. Hello, Egberto. This is uh, Dr. Anand Bhatt. I mean, you were talking about how bad all the doctors were. I had to call in. Oh, I, oh, I was talking about how good my doctor was. Uh, the one. The one. <laughs> and by the way, no, no, there are two. My doctor and uh, my sister. My sister is a doctor. But I forgot I have a, a the young man named Anand Bhatt along with... <laughs> along with another one, Mr. Bot, your dad, that are great doctors as well. But you're not my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think your sister treats adults. Go, what's that? No, your sister doesn't treat adults. Isn't she a pediatrician? My sister's a pediatrician, and that's how she likes it. She says it's a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I... He, 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 I'm going to give you some political diagnosis, okay? Let's hear it, brother. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you where where you're wrong, or okay. where you're, you're going off the rails here. Sure. Okay. This is where you're wrong. Okay. Tell me. The the you need to look up an article. It was a cover story of the Nation magazine called "How Martin Luther Predicted Donald Trump." Yes. Okay. The other person was talking about CNN not giving marching orders. Right. What he may not know or maybe he does know is that is the trick of the specific form of religion in this country which is to keep you agitated enough to watch but not agitated enough to do anything and this is a, a, almost ancient trick in this country now mm -hmm. So far, we're on the same, uh, Anand, the so far, we're on the same wavelength. I want to see where we differ. Okay. Now, uh, this is why uh, 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 how these uh, churches and, and conservative movements have used populism. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a deeper reasoning for what's the book, What's the Matter with Kansas? But this sort of get you very agitated, but don't go out and, you know, uh, don't actually go out and help homeless people. Don't organize them. Don't fight for medical care. Don't, uh, you know, uh, uh, bring buses and take people to Mexico or Canada for the insulin. But just be right. agitated and, and keep sitting in the chair. So this is, this predates TV. This, so right. this is, 
this is this is an old, old thing. So CNN is kind of getting into a traditional conservative religious uh, philosophy that is very old in this country. But check that article out, The Nation, uh, how Martin Luther predicted uh, uh, Donald Trump. Did you, now, did you uh, index that it? That brings us. Did you index it in your uh, on your uh, media? Uh, no, it's old. It's maybe a year or two old now. Okay, it's pretty old. Okay. Um, hey, hey, Bruno, can I respond? Can I one? respond to him? I think he had one yeah. other thing to say, but go ahead and respond, Don, Rudy. Hey, uh, listen, I, I I totally agree. I totally agree with you. I, I think that again, what we have is. Um, and uh, my father, my father is, is like Egberto. I mean, he, he would love your show. Um, it, what what we, we discuss all the time is how, how do we coalesce? Um, what, what CNN and MSNBC do, do not do very well, either one of them, and I watch them all the time, what they don't do is they don't give directive on, okay, what it, it's not just the news. There's nothing. Su- there's no such thing as it's just the news. Right. Let, let me. People let, are looking. Let me. Let me. Uh, I. 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 You. You said that before, uh, and you're absolutely right. But I want Anand to finish because I think Anand. I don't know if Anand is is it between rooms or what. So go ahead and finish. Your- oh, okay. So, so this links into our previous discussion. But before I get into it, let's look at Puerto Rico. Yeah. This is. Officially, the same country. Right. Okay? Puerto Rico is part of America. Right. But not part of that original Massachusetts, you know, religion culture because it has a different culture, which is Latino. Right. And what did they do? Leaks of actually damaging emails and text messages came out. And guess what? Within a week, the pres- the governor's gone. It's Within gone. Within a week. Right. Okay? They-, they didn't need cable news to tell them. They didn't need some instruction. They just went, and within what one, two weeks, he's gone. I mentioned okay? that today because on a. Aren't. I mentioned that today to a person. I said three percent, and then I said uh, Puerto Rico, and the guy didn't quite understand what I meant. And in effect, that's what I, that's what I was talking about. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I know. There's some study that said about three percent of the people have to protest, right. And that can change the government. I've heard that study, but. Puerto Rico was probably thirty-three percent. Exactly, uh, it was a million but, uh, people. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. That, 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 I'd like to so, chime so, in so, on Puerto Rico. We went down. So, so, wait, wait. Let, let, let him finish this point, Rudy. Let him finish. Let, let you back, Rudy. The, 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 yeah. So uh, this is where this sort of cultural religion uh, uh, fits in because you have the same country but a different religion culture. and a different uh, culture. Right. Uh, but in the same official country. So why why did it work in Puerto Rico and not here? So I'm going to give you four names of people. Who should have resigned in the same way as the governor of Puerto Rico? Okay. Okay. Because of even more so than Donald Trump, because of a incriminating video or an incriminating email. Okay. And I'm going to give you the four names: Rahm Emanuel. Right. He should have resigned. Right. Same thing. I'm going to give you Rick Snyder, right. governor of, Flo- uh, of Michigan. Right. Never resigned. Uh, I'm going to give you George Bush. Right. Hurricane Katrina. Everybody saw the videos. Uh, there was a, I was a third, I had a fourth one and it was a Democrat. I'm, I'm, of course, oh, the fourth one is Hillary Clinton. <laughs> when the email sh- came out, it, when Hillary okay. Clinton's email showed that the DNC suppressed Bernie Sanders' uh, uh, chances, okay, she should have not been given the nomination or should have resigned, and something similar should have happened. If you're going to talk about four analogous situations to a leak, and somebody should have resigned right away. Those four didn't happen. You asked the question. So, you if you can do these... Why. In a very you small... No, context. we'll never do it. We, we'll then, never do then it. You can't do no, it. No, listen, here's why. Wait, you let know, him finish. Let, let, I, I'm, 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 I'm giving you all the time after this, Rudy, because he got to go. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's the end of my point. If we couldn't get in a small area like Chicago the same kind of protest as Puerto Rico or in Michigan with Flint or with Hurricane Katrina, if we couldn't do it in these four cases, Trump, where it's a lot more equivocal and it's a lot more complicated... And there's no emails and there's no video. Uh, I mean, there might be a video with this Epstein thing. I don't know. But uh, at the moment, if you couldn't do it in those four cases, Trump is in the clear. He's fine. Okay, okay hold on. Ask. Let Rudy go now because I want right. to hear what Rudy has to say, and then I want to chime in. Go ahead, Rudy. Okay. Okay. Here's what I want to I want to respond to uh, the doctor 
that, that was just saying about Puerto Rico. What I recognized was we were down there when the uh, the clean debris up in mm-hmm. Puerto Rico yes. with the trucks and and when all that. And I, what I saw was a different taste of life. The reason why what you're talking about won't happen in America uh-huh. is because the pace of life is so fast, right? And we're, everybody's so busy, right? That they that they're the, the not, we are junkies for this stuff, right? But the average American is not, and so as a consequence, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now that the south side of Chicago is isolated from the north side, the west side, and the east side. It's quadrants. By it's the L, not right? Like Houston. What's that? Isn't the L a big separator? The L, yeah, the L, the L is the, the delineator. Right. But the reality, here, here's what I see. Here's what I see. In Puerto Rico, what you have is a group of folks that are actually, actually coalesce to a, a large extent. What you have in America is siloed individuals. Oh, you have it and so right. You know, um, Rudy, I, I want to interrupt you. I want to interrupt you, and then I want to bring in three five. Uh, three five to another caller, but I want to tell you, you know, I I tell people all of the times, politics done right garners the smartest damn listeners, the smartest damn watchers, and all of that. When you listen to you, Rudy Anand, even Bianchi, who is a conservative who's trying to creep up the conservative mantra, had some sensible things to say when he called in earlier today. But here's some, an important thing that I want to say, um, and th- this this is rather important. Everything that you guys are saying is right. When, Rudy, you tell me I'm a positive person, I am saying I have to be a positive person. We have to have people who, who are willing to put themselves on the line, take the hits, be called the names and all of that to try to break exactly what you're talking about, Rudy, and that is the silos. And what I'm saying is I want to be part of that group that's going to try to hit those silos. And in order for us to have a Puerto Rico, we have to bust up the silos so that we can spill those people out. But let me put you on hold. Not put you on hold. Just stay hot, Rudy. Let me bring 352 in. Uh, 352, you're hot. Hi, Roberto. Tom Wells here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you fine. Talk to me, Tom. How are you doing, my brother? Not too badly. I had a comment with regard to the 3% and Puerto Rico. Yes, sir. Which is that in Puerto Rico, they had the advantage that... Uh, the documentation was going to lead to his impeachment anyway. Right. So he had more incentive than many of our public servants to resign. But the 3% rule is somewhat vitiated in America today, by, as shown by the Princeton Northwestern study of uh, public sentiment versus congressional action, where the correlation between 1,500 documented right. cases of publicly interested interesting uh no i saw i saw that study right in other words if you take a look at legislation that gets passed it doesn't matter what people believe it only matters what the people who give a certain class in this in this country want and all the policies the correlation with their desires was 90 percent now but what we have you know and and tom tom is the the name right tom yeah tom here's here's the thing tom yep we met in Philly. Ah, I remember. I thought I thought I recognized that accent. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I recognized that accent, but I quite wouldn't say. But here, here's the thing. Here's the real thing that I want to say. Everything that you guys have said is true. And that, but, you know, just saying it is true doesn't mean we keep it that way. It means how do we mitigate that reality? And that is my question goal and and it's not when i say my goal it's not myself only it's what i expect a lot of other folks to do what we want to do is duplicate ourselves when we spent time out there in philly um tom you saw you saw the energy and you saw the the disparate amount of folk out there and you went when you went into that hall i don't know if you went into the exhibit hall if you went into the exhibit hall what you would have seen that i hadn't seen before is we had podcasters in there that were trying to make themselves known. We had all those different kinds of folks out there now. What we have to do is we have to be supportive of those guys because we have 
to build the movement. And it's not going to be easy. Anand is right. Anand is well, right. I'm Rudy to, is right. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm a, hold on. Egberto, I'm, listen, I'm a 90s Republican. Yes. I'm saying I can work with you. I'm and a 90s Republican. I know Republican, you can. To be clear. And I, and I can work with you. I can work with Anand. I can work with this uh, the guy Tom, Tom here. Yeah. I can, we, can, we can coalesce. We can co what I'm saying, and my father. We, I just had this conversation, um, my fa with my father this morning. And by the way, I want you guys to pray for him because he has cancer. My but, blessed be unto um, him, man. My most, my most sincere. I, you know, go ahead. But what 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 we talked about was I said, and we 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 discussed and we agreed. He's he's about as, he's more liberal than you mm -hmm. are, Egberto, um, and. What we talked about was there was a time when we could, okay, let, let's see where we can find commonality. Now, Trump, to be clear, is not a Republic, Republican. He's not a Democrat. He's a Trumpian. Right. And he just happens to have, he happens to have capture over the evangelical um, uh, part of the Republican right. base but that are individual. But here's the but, thing, but, but Rudy, you're right. Let me tell you something. So I need to interrupt you here when you said evangelicals. The reason why America as a country likes dictators, right, is because if they go into, if they go into uh, let's say, fit the Philippines or one of these countries, they just need to speak to the dictator, and the dictator becomes the enforcer of all the populations, right? And then so America can have George, that entire... George population. Bush said that... Exactly. George Bush said that very eloquently that... Uh, it's so easy to be a dictator because I don't have to talk to anyone. Exactly, and the same goes with right. us as a did country. You, oh, did you, did, Egberto, did you see the? Did you see the interview? I, I just want to point you to it. I and I know you do a lot of um, screenshots. Yes, on, sir. I, I and I was one. I said I know he's going to play this. Trump was. He gave. He gave um, um, uh, a speech. He mm -hmm. gave a, a speech right after Mueller, mm -hmm. and. What he does is he's projecting himself as America. Right. Exactly. And that's how you and do it. What he that is how you have, you know, we have, look, Donald Trump is an expert on these things. And there, there, there are things that we need to adapt and do as well. So you, you're correct about that. But let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, Anand, Anand has been quiet. Anand, you need to say anything? Okay. Well, yeah, this is my perspective. This, this is what I have to say. If we get a Ronald Daniel, or if we look at our situation right now in Cleveland, where you have a congresswoman and a mayor right. who, who ha released a wife beater out of jail and got him a job at the city council, uh, at the city, and then he killed his wife. Right. And the entire Cleveland Democratic establishment was behind it. These people don't have consequences. Right. So I don't know why you think you can hold the president... Uh, accountable if we can't get mayors and uh, governors accountable. So the question that we're going to get uh, accountability from Donald Trump for a 50-state country, impossible. Okay, here's if what our I... Most well, you know, let, me, cities, let me respond. Can I if our respond most progressive say... cities are one-party states. Right. Places like Chicago and Cleveland... Hold on, Rudy. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. you get it next. Yeah. Okay, Rudy, yeah, respond. Uh, 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 if you can't uh, have accountability uh, there, then you're not going to get accountability with Trump. Right. we got to start... At the local level. Hannon, I hear Hannon, you. Is, let, me, let me ask you this question. Advanced. Okay, go ahead, Ryan. Uh, let me throw this question out here. I want to throw this question out Hey, Rudy, out here. Rudy, Rudy, gotta, Rudy, 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 hold on, Rudy. Rudy, you got to let me direct traffic because we can't see each other. So go ahead. All right, go okay. ahead, Rudy. No, no, I, I'm, I love what he's saying. Look, and I, man, I mean, I, I can't believe I'm... Hey, let me tell you, this is what I realized. When I was I, I office out of Washington, D.C., and when I realized that, do you, re do you know... That it is all about the laws that are codified. The very people who are running our government at every level are the ones who make the laws. What we've gotten away from, in my opinion, there was a time when us as civilians, we would focus on codifying law, changing it, modifying it, the law, as opposed to just rhetoric. What we've gotten away from is average, everyday individuals knowing what the law is that controls them. Your congressperson can do whatever they want to without consequence as long as they're in office. 
Your mayor can do whatever he or she wants to do as long as they're in office without consequence because we, as the people, no longer, instead of looking at social media and watching TV, we don't look at the law anymore. And here's the answer. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. Here's the answer, right? We can do two things as I see it. We can throw our hands up in the air and say it is all over. We can throw our hands up in the air and say we are done as a country because, uh, you know, it's all done and the plutocracy will take over and eventually we'll all be in indentured servitude. I refuse to accept that. And what I'm saying is I believe in change. You know, a lot of people look at the way that I do things on the Internet, right? And they're like, why are you doing that? You're, you're, you're doing stuff like they're doing uh, 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 with these things. And I'm like, yes. Because I am not going to try to get the people to come to me. I am going to start going to the people. And if I find the people at a uh, reality TV type style, that is what I'm going to do to talk to them. You know, Rudy, I am, I'm going to put uh, Anan on hold because I'm getting a lot of uh, background noise, Anan. Uh, but if, if you know, if you know here's, here's the deal, uh, Rudy. I, I am able, even here in my very conservative area, to talk to everybody. And the reason why is, like I said, I meet everybody where they are. Let me get to another call. I think this is 760 or 78 something. Go ahead. You're on. Go ahead, sir. You're on. Hello. You're on, 786. Hello? Yes, you're on. Hey, Egberto, this is Ron Cole back in the CNN days. Hey, hey Ron, to hear from you. I report those were the great <laughs> days. We're, you know, uh, for those who are not listening, we were all I reporters at CNN, and we were the, like, the, we were the big ones. We were the ones that everybody, we, we were on TV, you know, sometimes four, five, six times a week. Go ahead, Ron. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, I love your show. I always watch it. Congratulations. Keep the good work up. Listen, just wanted to put some two cents in, considering this uh, problem we have yes. as far as enforcement. Um, you know, I have some background here. You know, I'm pretty good at my research as yes, well. Yes, you are. Um, the the thing that I have a problem with is the convoluting and misinterpretation of the Constitution, i.e., the current DOG uh, guideline, DOJ guideline yeah. of not indicting a sitting president, which, by the way, has no constitutional viability nor any legal legs to exactly. stand on. And this dichotomy that that this creates means that the once uh, guideline by the founders, which was a president only had to misbehave. He didn't have to actually commit a crime to be impeached. Right. Uh, to get impeached. Now, if you, as a president, engaged in criminal activity, um, you were gone within hours. Right. It was, there was no question about it. So now we have a situation where, by a rule, a guideline rule in the DOG, by the way, which was drafted and implemented by people in a branch of government that has zero elected officials in it, mm -hmm. now, make, now make it where even if a president is engaging in what appears now to be even hostile criminal activity towards the American public and the well-being of the nation, um, we can do nothing. Let me differ and this a bit. Is got, this is Ron, let me differ with you Go ahead, a I'm bit. sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Let me just differ with you a bit in this regard. I think uh, there, there's nothing within the guidelines. Even, I mean, from for Congress has Congress, it does not have to follow absolutely anything that the DOJ has to say. Congress can vote to impeach, yes, and they can do as they please. So, I mean, that that restriction is whether or not the DOJ is going to do something against the, their own president. And to some extent, you know, whether they do or not, to me, it's academic, right? Because as it turns out, constitutionally speaking, and this is why I said early, early on, I told folks it's not about the DOJ because of one specific reason. The president does, in fact, have the right to fire anybody because he's the executive. So he can do that. Now, uh, now, if we created a law which he signs, meaning the presidency signs, that says some other function has to be there, 
and that is then upheld by the, by the, the, the uh, Supreme Court, then we can have a change in process. But uh, as it stands right now, the president is absolutely correct. Anybody who decides that they want to, to, uh, to uh, attack him or indict him or whatever, he can always fire them before that occurs. I mean, that's definite. That, I mean, the, well, go ahead. That's what he did, cause that, and that's why he made all, that's why he made all of, all of his, uh, his secretaries are acting. Exactly. So that he has the ability to control them. Now, what I want to make a recommendation to you, Egberto, yes, sir. is this. I love your show. Mm -hmm. I love your show. I'm telling you, the, let's fight. Give people because if you're going to go to your public your your your, your public representative, mm -hmm. you want to be able to tell that's it, that being active. Tell them what law you want to be modified, so we can hold them accountable. And if if, if every show that you have at some point you give the citation, you don't even have to read it. If you give the citation for the law that makes it possible. <coughs> Make it possible. What you're doing is empowering the people that listen to your show to go to their public representation and say, I want this. And I law think law. that starting from what Ron had to say, I think that is damn good advice. And in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to incorporate something to that effect. Remember, I'm producer, uh, producer, writer, copywriter, all that sort of stuff. I'm trying like hell to get enough subscribers that I can get me a copy editor and a producer because this this stuff is tough <laughs> to do this. I will Run. Get, I'll get them. Listen, <laughs> Egberto, I will get, listen, I, and I, what I commit to, Egberto, yes, what sir. I commit to is this. Let me give you this commitment. Yes. I commit to, I have seven, I have eight, now 18,000 followers. Right. 18,000 followers. I will share. If you're going to do that, Man, we can make something happen. Well, well Ron, you, you go ahead. I will, I will put it out. Not Ron, uh, uh, Rudy. Rudy, you go ahead and you do that. Because, like I said, I have the smartest listeners, the smartest readers. And the one thing everybody who listens and watch and reads my stuff can tell you is my biggest advisors are, the peop are you guys. And, there's, and that is not being, that is, that is real. You take a look at the things that I write. My biggest, biggest, hugest advisors or the people that are here. Ron, you have anything else you want to say real quickly? Yeah, you know, I had a different take on that a little bit as far as how the law works. Um, I, I, you know, I understand that the president has the right to fire and hire anybody mm -hmm. he wants. However, there are actual laws that if you fire someone that is investigating you, that is, in fact, obstruction of justice now even if you try to do it it's obstruction of justice mm -hmm. now that law is in place the problem that we have is the enforcement of that law it's, as it reads it's because executive. it's not mandatory yes change the wording to, right. to mandatory and everything changes. Shall. there you go there yeah, you. i agree with you, now, you, 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 see, the, you word, see. the wording here's what we used to do we used to do this my my mentor was hank wilfong he he was the uh assistant um director at uh, the uh, SBA administrator under Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. for all for his entire terms. And one of the things that we did, we, we got for the small, for small businesses, we got the May and it's all, it comes down to singular words. We got in so many laws, we got may change to shall. Absolutely. Hey guys, and I got to close. Saying, I got to close out my friends. I mean, you guys have been great. Anand, Ron, Ran, uh, Anand, Ran, Rudy, and who am I missing? I'm missing somebody. Who is that uh, other call? I didn't write it down. Who's Tom. Tom. Tom well, there we go. So, uh, Tom. Listen, Tom. How uh, could I for how could I forget you, Tom? You know how is the campaign going? <laughs> well, the campaign is principally focused on impeachment of Trump. Which well, I, I tell you what. You know what? I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go, uh, Tom. I gotta go. But I'm gonna give yeah. you 15 seconds to give yourself a plug. Tell people who you are. 15 seconds. Hold, hold it to that. Go. Tom Wells, U.S. Congress in Florida, CD3. The incumbent is Ted Yoho of the Freedom Caucus, and I'm campaigning first for the impeachment of the fool which will enable us to elect representatives across the nation. There you go, and 15 seconds. Everybody, Anand, Close Ron, up. Tom, uh, Ron, and uh, Rudy, thank you guys so kindly 
for being here. You guys make all of this worth doing. You guys are great. Folks, my I, pleasure. I, absolutely, absolutely. Folks, I need to make a quick uh, my quick pitch here. Uh, please remember to support Politics Done Right. One of the one of the progressive shows online that is out there making a difference. Please go to Patreon.com. How, how do we how do we get how do how do we get donations to you? Real quick, Egberto, how do we get how do we get donations to you? Because the, the corporate business donations are no are normally bigger okay, than me, uh, regular people. Let me just tell you: go to PoliticsDoneRight.com/slash/donate, and you, that, there you, there you go. PoliticsDoneRight.com/slash/donate. Okay. All right. PoliticsDoneRight.com right. slash donate. So let me give my pitch here, folks. Please, please, please become a subscriber of the show. Patreon.com slash PoliticsDoneRight. On the screen right now, what I'm showing you are all the different ways that you can uh, contribute to the show. And guess what is happening here? I deleted that. I deleted that by mistake. Anyhow. We'll do that the next time. But anyhow, <laughs> any, <laughs> anyhow, uh, patreon.com slash politics. Hey, right. hey, hey, oh, hey, yes, go hey ahead. Myrtle, yes, sir. Another thing, put your email, listen, put your email, put an email address, not maybe one where you want to be blown up, but also on when you when, uh, underneath the screen where you've got your telephone number, put your email address so that we can share it with other folks to get you the discussion. The subscribers. Excellent. I'll, I'll do that, my friend. I'll, I'll absolutely do that. Uh, folks, uh, we are coming close to the end of the hour. Uh, PoliticsDoneRight.com slash donate. Uh, if you want, by the way, guess what we have now? We have t-shirts, the Politics Done Right t-shirt. So if you go to store.politicsdoneright.com, I'm going to have some in-house tomorrow. I believe it comes in. But you can go ahead and get it mailed to you directly. And we have, guess what? The Politics Done Right Cup. Let folks know that you mean business. You are part of the Politics can, Done can Right we family. Invest? You, are you taking investors? No, are no. Are you taking investors? No, no. I mean, uh, let me tell you. What I, what I want is contributions to, to keep this stuff going. And I tell you what happens then. Uh, uh, the things that I do for uh, big contributors is like I did for uh, uh, Carpentry, uh, Tim, Tim Danahy Carpentry, who... Uh, I put up a, a, a ad on my uh, page for them because they're one of our large contributors and make sure that, you know, uh, give something back. You know, we give books and all that kind of stuff. But for somebody who's going to give you 500 bucks, $1,000, that kind of stuff, I want, I, I, you know, I, I feel good giving somebody some sort of advertising that kind of a way. So there are different methods that you can come and support the show and make sure that we get the two. As far as investors is concerned, I'm not tur turning this into, I know you're a capitalist, Rudy, but I'm not turning this into a capitalist venture. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is a late. Why? Uh, let me tell you why. See, you know what? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. And that's why, that's why we, that's why we agree to disagree. I, I don't know, man. I love let you, me brother. Tell you something. <laughs> With the right investment, you, you would be, you you would blow up overnight, sir, with the right amount of. You know, but capital. here's the thing. I want thing. you to keep I, thinking about that. I'll think about it, but let me tell you, sir. I, I honestly want to say this, okay, and 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 I want my listeners to hear this. I had a company, or still have a company that's on its deathbed right now because you know I don't support it anymore. Willie's Computer Software Company. You guys can look it up and see the kind of work that we did. And I made a, a lot of money with that company and felt that I had to give back. Now. I am not making any money, and my retirement is almost gone, but it's for a good cause. And let me tell you, it's better, okay? I did that voluntarily. I'm just saying that I did that voluntarily because I think when we talk, a lot of people talk about what have to get done, right? I want to show that there are really folks that are willing to put skin in the game for things that they believe in. So when I come to you and I say, X, when I talk to a capitalist, they are not able to tell me that I am doing this because I can't make it on my own. And that's the reason I, that is the reason I do these things. It's not like, oh, I just want to be entirely altruistic. It's to show folks that, look, it is, it, it is truly about how do you move people. People will have a lot more faith in the words that I say if they know that I am not doing this because, oh, I couldn't do something else because I did. And I voluntarily, while it was still on the upswing, gave that up. So therefore, that is my spiel, if you will. But thank you so kindly, Rudy. You put all of you guys that are listening, push politics on right. We need to get the message out and we can change this country. And I mean that. We can change folk. 
I have a daughter that I want to make sure is going to grow up in a city, in a country worth growing up in. I'm I, with you on that. All man. right, brother. So thank I got you. four sons. There I got you go, brother. Sons. There you go, brother. So, And that's what I'm talking about. So I got to get out of here now. So, folks, thank you so kindly for listening to the program. This is Egberto Willis with Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S that is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. Whoa.